social medias, our visitors, I greet you all in this mighty, wonderful name, Jesus. We'll continue our worship with the singing of him, hymn number 12. We have an anchor. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep the worship going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Will your anchor hold Jesus. in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? Oh, when the strong tides lift and the cables split, will your
say, please catch this hunger that your soul may be saved. Sister Max will come to us this morning with the morning lesson. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Mighty God. Jesus, you are worthy, you are worthy, oh God. Jesus. Her morning's lesson is taken from Daniel 3, reading from verse 4 unto the end. Mighty God. Amen. Then an herald cried aloud, To you is it commanded, O people, nations and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, palsy, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, shall the same hoard be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Therefore, at that time, when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, arm, sackbut, palsy, and all kinds of music, all the people and nations and the languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. Wherefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spake and said to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, arm, sackbut, palsy, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Pedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee, they serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hadst set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods? nor worship the golden image which I have set up. Now if ye be ready that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, arm, sackbut, palsy, and dulcimer, and all kind of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast this same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is it that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. But it not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one several times more than it was Want to be eaten. 
And he commanded that most mighty men that were in his, sorry, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and to cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosts, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, the flames of the fire slew these men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the, mean was, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake. And said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they had no burn, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the midst of, from forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was an ear coat, sorry, nor was the hair of their head singed. Neither was their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who has sent his angel and delivered his servants and trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies and they might serve, not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation and language Jesus, my God, my God, Jesus, 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 My God. shall be cut in pieces and their homes shall be made a downhill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort the thirtieth and last then the king promised Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego in the province of Babylon thank you Jesus Brother Henry and the mission director, Sister Haven Williams, will take us to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, 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 Jesus. Thank you,
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Mighty God. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mighty God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, 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 mm. Jesus, Jesus, Hallelujah. thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Our team today is anchored in Christ. And we are like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego today. We have no other God to anchor to but our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All the other gods, they are the works of men. You, you are, are the most high God. God. There is none like you.
the best is yet to come. When I have a feeling in my heart, the best is yet to come. I have a feeling days are coming by and by. What a happy time it will be when we all get home. Over by the crystal sea, never more to roam. We shall see him on the throne, hear the joy bells ring, singing while the ages roll. What a happy time, what a happy time it will be when we all get home. Oh, over by the crystal sea, never more to roam. We shall see him on the throne, hear the joy bells ring, singing while the ages roll. What a happy time. Time will be when we all get home Over by the crystal sea Never more to roam Oh, we shall see him on the throne Hear the joy bells ring Oh, singing while the ages roll What a happy... Put your hands together Crystal say never more to roam. We will see him on the throne, we will hear the joy bells ring, and we will be singing while the ages roll. What a happy time! Let me greet you in the most exalted name, the name Jesus. What a wonderful name! It is a saving name, the name that brings deliverance, the name that brings peace to souls, the name which is above every other name, and at that name every knee bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let me greet all those who are visiting with us this morning, happy to have you in grace and truth. A spiritual center for life. A family church. Amen. We get crazy when we come together. 
but that's all right. Amen? If I'm mad for God, I'm mad. Amen? And um, let me welcome you to church, those who are watching. Let me greet you in the, this morning, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the saints. Happy to have you in church today. Amen? Amen? Amen. God is a good God. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to the book of Psalm 61. Amen. And I'll be talking to you for a little. What a beautiful time we're going to have when we get back here later. We'll be having church tonight. Amen. God is a good God. Amen. We have gone through the fire. We have been through the bloods. We have been broken in pieces. We have seen lightning flashing from above, but through it all. He loves us and he cares and he will never put more on us than we can bear. We'll be back tonight to worship the Lord. Amen. And we'll be sending up some praise in the atmosphere this Sunday evening. Amen. I, I, and the songwriter said, I know the devil doesn't like it, but it's down in my heart. We're up in my head. We're down in my feet. I know the devil doesn't like it, but it's all over me. All over me to stay. I've got the Sunday school and Tuesday has him down in my heart. We're up in my head. We're down in my feet. I got the Sunday school and Tuesday has him all over me. All over me to stay. Your tango goes, oh, goes, oh, in me, Carason. In me, Carason. In me, Carason. Your tango goes, oh, goes, oh, in me, Carason. Carason, your tango pass, 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 and make a rasson. Hallelujah! Amen. So we're going to do it in Spanish, we're going to do it in English, but we'll be worshiping the Lord. The psalm, the psalm is Davis, David in Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the hurt will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. For thou, O God, hath heard my vows. Thou hast given me an heritage for those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and is here as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform my vows. Wonderful Jesus, sweet will of God, still fold me closer till I am wholly lost in thee, sweet will of God. I standing off you, empty vessel, broken and battered, but God, you chose me and I'm standing here because of your mercies, because of your grace, because of your love. So mighty God, as I stand here today, I pray for a word in my spirit. And God, I want you to speak to me from the crown of my head even to the sole of my feet. Send me an angel just now. That God, as I open my mouth, I might fill it with words that your people might leave you being blessed, being oxygenized by your power. God, those who haven't got the Holy Ghost as yet, God, baptize somebody today with the baptism of your Holy Spirit. God, we are waiting, we are patiently waiting on you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated.
I was driving this week and I remembered that the The plan for the month was sent to me. And I was saying, I was driving, and I remember I didn't look at it. I know I passed it, I went through it, but I did not remember some contents of it. And I picked up my phone, and I looked at the theme for today, and I threw on my phone because I was driving, and I asked God, what must I preach today? And, he, and the words came to my heart, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that it had, and I said, you say so, that's what I do. So I stand here depending on God to direct my thoughts. Amen? We are dealing with the topic anchored in Christ. There are some things, and brethren, I, I like to break this down because many times we hear the words and we go through a month of, of, of different subtopics and we sometimes don't grasp the essence of what is we must is being passed on to us. Amen? 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 Uh, and and, and sometimes you learn, sometimes you pass some things and not many persons receive what it may pass on to them. Sometimes it becomes confusing in the process in passing some stuff. Amen? And, and, and you leave your... Um, but today I hope to God that as I speak to you, you will leave you with an understanding of Sam. In ancient time, the hanker was viewed as a symbol that represent safety. If you look at an hanker, and I will run ahead of myself and get back there. If you look at an anchor, anybody know what a hanker is? If you know what is an anchor, stick your hand up. All right, so there are some persons that doesn't know what an anchor is, but we sing, we have an anchor that keeps our soul. It sounds good, right? But, but you really don't know what it is. An anchor is a heavy piece of metal that make like a spear. They use it to dock ships back in the days. So the anchor, several men would lift it up and throw it out of the ship in the water. And as long as it goes down with a length of a rope or chain, the ship can't move. Whatever happened, the ship would stay at that place. It can't, what? Move. If you... View and hanker, as the Christians view it, an anchor, an anchor represent the cross. So the anchor would be down and the cross would be up. All right? Amen? Anybody get that? So the anchor is a representation of the cross. So the Christian view the anchor whenever... You view the cross, you view something that will, will stabilize you. What the anchor does when you put it under the water, it stabilizes the ship and gives the sailors hope. So they can go to bed and sleep, knowing that the ship ain't going to drift anywhere. When they wake up in the morning, they'll be at the same place. The Christian views the cross as an anchor. And we view what the Lord has done for us. And we say what it does to us, it is the hanker for our soul. What it does, it gives us peace of mind. It gives us hope. It gives us satisfaction. Amen? So the, the Christian used Jesus Christ and the cross as their hanker. And it gives us this hope. Anybody inside here have that hope? No matter what, we have that hope. And when the winds and the tides is rocking, you still have that hope. And it doesn't matter what happens in your life, you, you still have that hope. And, and even when you feel like you can't go on, you say, if it hadn't been for Jesus, you see? But, but it, it gives you that sense of hope, that sense of purpose, that sense of, of comfort. And 
that is what you, we, we find in Jesus. The hanker. David, in the book of Psalms 61, as he wrote this psalm, David wrote it at a time when he was far away from home. David was anointed to be king. Scholars cannot theorize whether we, at the time when he was far away from home, whether he was king or he was anointed king, he was fleeing from Saul or he was fleeing from Absalom. But it theorized that he was far away from home. He was far away from the place that he's supposed to be worshipping. Brethren, and if you know what Jesus said to the woman of the well, you would understand where I'm going. Um, when the woman of the well met Jesus, she said, Our fathers worship in the mountain. There, are, there were designated places that you go to worship. Amen? And if the place wasn't designated for worship, you wouldn't worship there. Amen? But David was far away from home. And while he was there, he was lost. Have anybody in a situation and you're lost in another situation? Because trouble on every side. He was, he was despaired and, 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 and he was struggling. Hmm? And while he was there, he didn't know where to turn. He, he could not find the place of worship because it was far away from home. And he was now in this place where he was struggling. And he, he decided to make where he is a place of worship. Oh, hallelujah. It is not according to custom, but I'm going to make it custom. Amen? So David opened his mouth and he started saying to God, hear my cry, O oh God, and attend unto my prayer. From the end of the hurt will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. As he speak to this, his heart was overwhelmed. Uh, that verse, overwhelmed, and your heart being overwhelmed, is a serious situation. When one's heart is overwhelmed, you feel like you're buried beneath. Hello? You are not on top, but you are under. Struggling and don't know what to do or where to turn. So if you hear someone say, my heart is overwhelmed, it means that they are burdened. They are struggling on every side to come above. So David, as he said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. What he was saying to, to, in, in so many words, he, he was saying, he was saying, if you could lift me up and bring me on top, I would be okay. So he was praying to God in this time of despair, in his time of struggling. And at that point, his only hope was Jesus Christ. He had no other hope but in Christ. Amen. 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 And I see he was saying to God, you have been a shelter for me so far. And you have been a strong tower. So, you know, you have been a tower from my enemies. You covered me. So right now where I'm at underneath, buried underneath, I am asking you for a favor to lift me above. So the songwriter said, will your hand holes? In the storms of life. The anchor is to hold the ship even when the storm is raging. And the, the, the sailors must be certain that the anchor holds. 
And somebody said, the anchor's hold, though my ship is battered. The anchor holds, though my sails are torn. What that is helping us to understand as, indiv as individuals, it doesn't matter the situation that you and I go through, we should still hold to Jesus Christ as our source of strength. So David was overwhelmed by his situation. He, and then brethren, sometimes you look at persons in, 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 in high esteem. And David was anointed to be king. And you said David must be living lavish life. He was running. And sometimes you look at a child of God and you say for them life nice -y. A Christian, a God church. But you don't understand the situations we have to face. So today, I want us to leave here with an understanding that we should put our hope in Christ alone. Not in anything else, but in Christ alone. When we put our hope in Christ, it doesn't matter what the situation might be. Christ is going to come through for us. Many patriots of the Bible learn, learn this. Sometimes when they are faced with situation, they will try to find God and ask him out to help them out of their situation. One person we could look at as we deal with this was Moses as he seeked to lead the children of Israel um, to the promised land. The children of Israel were wayward people. Amen? Amen? They were people that you could not tame them. And it's hard for these people, you know. Anybody know that? Amen. In my earlier days, as a young boy, when I drive on the passenger buses and I saw what was happening there, I, my, my thought, I would not love to become a passenger, a public passenger driver. I would rather to drive the hearse. Because what I get from that, as long as the dead is behind me, I won't have any problem. But the passengers give a lot of problems. People are to, 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 to lead. And, and the Lord Jesus Christ was upset with the children of Israel. And, and he looked at them and he, he talked to Moses. And he said, Moses, I want these people to sanctify themselves. I want to bless them. I want to do something in their life. But I want them to sanctify themselves. But I notice I want to come down in their midst and I want to do something. But right now if I come down in their midst, they are going to die. Because they are a stiff-necked group of people. And Moses came out and said, I was just talking to God. And God says, you are a stiff-necked group of people. And the people start to tremble. Because the Lord wants to come down. And the Lord wants to bless. And the Lord wants to put them into a land that flows with milk and honey. But their attitude towards God was preventing them from reaping the success that they should have. So the Lord spoke to Moses, and as the Lord spoke to Moses, the Lord's intention was for them to follow his commandments, and the Lord's intention for them to, to listen to their leaders, but they weren't listening as they ought to. And the Lord would speak to Moses, and Moses would listen to the voice of God. And as Moses listened to the voice of God, one day he wake up and the Lord tell him to tell the people, sanctify themselves and come before the tabernacle because I want, I'm going to talk to Moses. And the people come and they sanctify themselves, they stood in front of the tabernacle. And while they stood there, they offered up their sacrifices to God. And while they offered, they stood at the door of the tabernacle and they watched Moses as he walked and he went into the tabernacle. The word of God says, as soon as Moses went into to the tabernacle the Holy Ghost came down as a pillar of cloud and stood before the door of the tabernacle so the people realized that Moses was inside and the presence of Almighty God has surrounded the tabernacle so God was now speaking to Moses 
And the beauty about speaking to God when you are in the presence of Almighty God and when your hope is built up in God, you are in a position where you want to know more about God. Amen. Moses, by talking to God from the get-go when he encountered the burning bush, his hope was now built up in God. So he was now de depending on God. So here what happened. Moses was inside talking to God and listening to God. The words that he had to say to him to give back to the congregation of Israel. And while he was there, he felt sweet in the presence of Almighty God. And Moses said to God, listen, I want you to show me your glory. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody ever reached a point in your Christian life when you want to see the glory of Jesus? One writer says, it shine brighter and brighter. The closer I get, the more I feel the glory of the soon coming king. So Moses was all excited in the tent. I want to show you who God really is. As he was seeking to feel and feeling the presence of Almighty God, God was now talking to him. And God said, listen, Moses, you want to see my glory. You want to see my face. But no man see my face and live. So you know what happened? I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. Can I say to somebody, just like David was saying, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. There is something about the rock. The rock is our sense of security. The rock is our holy hope. The rock is our survival. So the Lord was now saying, hey, I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the rock. So here was the Lord said to him in the book of Exodus chapter 33 and verse 21. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me that thou shalt stand upon a rock. If you are going through your situation, God is saying this morning, there is a place by me and there is a rock. I am the rock of your security. Oh God Almighty. So, so Moses was now understanding that the rock was Jesus. And David understand when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. You get that one, Sister Wishart? So the Lord was now saying, There is a place by me. You might not understand or you might want to know more or you want to see more but come beside me. And when you are beside me there is so much you will find out about me. So Moses get beside him and stand up on the rock and the rock he was standing up on was the rock Jesus Christ. Mm. And he said when I pass while I pass my glory, you will, I will cover your face so you can't see my face. But when I pass, you will see my back part. So the Lord passed by Moses while he was standing on the rock. He was in a covered cleft of the rock. So, so no wonder when the songwriter penned the words of the song. He said, he hided my soul in the cleft of the rock. We are shadow, we are shadow. What? A, a, a thirsty land. He hided myself in the cleft of the rock and he covers me dear with his hands. So what the Lord was doing, he was covering Moses in the cleft of the rock. Can I say to somebody, Jesus can be your covering today. He can be your protector today. Oh, praise the name of Almighty God. So the word of God says, when Moses came out of the tent, the people had to veil his face because he came close with Almighty God. 
He came out and the, the, the burden that he went inside there with. He came out without that burden. Can I say to somebody you might walk inside this room with a burden. And you can leave without a burden. Because the rock of ages is in this room. Somebody said rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. So hear what happened. David was going through his turmoil, but he knows that his anchor is in Jesus Christ. Can I say to somebody in this room today, let your heart, let your mind, let your spirit dig deep in the hope of Almighty, Almighty God. Huh? If you can dig your, yourself in the hope of Almighty God, the word of God says, hope that make it not a shame. I might be going through my situation, but I trust in a God to take me out. His name is Jesus. He's my rock of all ages. And whenever the, whenever the trying time comes, I can trust in him. The word of God speaks. And he says it's very important for all of us as Christians. As we go through a Christian life to have, as it were, a eternal hope. And that is very important to have, brethren. Because the word says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, of all men we be what? most miserable. What the eternal hope does, it gives us hope beyond this life. And we need to have that sense of security now. It's like having a bank account. Anybody in this church does that doesn't have an account? You don't have no savings. Pray for put up your hand to say you're not saved. If you're not saved, you're just not saved. As simple matter as that. That's not rocket science. If you're not saved, you're just not saved. If you're not putting up anything for rainy day, you're not put up nothing for rainy day. Five virgins went and they didn't have any oil. And they them, them never shamed to say we don't have no oil. When they heard that the bridegroom coming, they said, give us some of your oil. And somebody say, you never save none, we don't have none for you. Simple matters. Amen? But can I give you a free commercial? If you are not saving, save at least your first doctor bill. And when you're sick, go to the doctor for the very first time. And when you come back, say, doctor, take all of my money. You know what happens after? Anybody will help you. Because you spend all of your money at doctor and you're broke. That was free. But it's very important to have a sense of eternal security. The word of God says in Psalm 14 and verse 32, the wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his debt. What is propelling us to sit here today is the hope that we have in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The hope that we have, our uh, God, we look like we're stupid, but the word of God said, this hope maketh me not ashamed, because one day I am certain, this same Jesus, who I worship, is going to come back for me. So if everybody around me think I'm stupid, I'm not stupid. I have hope in Jesus, so let the wicked go on and do what they want to do. Let the man who don't love Jesus do what they want to do. But you know what happened? I have hope. One day, he's going to come back for a group of people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. A group of people who are called by his name. He's going to come back for us. So we are leaning on that hope. 
I'm leaning on Jesus. So the topic says we are anchored in Christ. So you know what happened? Every time we turn, we are leaning on the everlasting arms of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. We have hope. It is more like our savings as we come together, as we believe in this God. It is more like a treasure that we have stored up. Brethren, when you, when you come to church, friend, when you come to church, make up your mind and get buried in water in the name of Jesus Christ and rise to walk in the newness of life and receive the power of the Holy Ghost. You know what you start doing? Laying up some treasure someplace. And that is your, that is your, is your, is your, is your guarantee that hey, one day I'm going to inherit what I have stored up. Amen. So you know what? You hankered yourself. You know what happened? And some people need to understand that you need to seek up this sense of security. I was listening to somebody the other day and they said, nothing is wrong with having five, six, seven, eight insurance policies for one person. You can have as much as you want. Nothing is wrong with it. But when you die, what good is insurance policy to you when you're dead? Some people go to a particular church because they know that the church will assist in their burial. So then no matter if them save or no, them just want to know so when they're dead, the church assists in their burial. And they know them will get a good send-off. This church these with your eternal security. It doesn't matter. The writer said it doesn't matter when I die, where I die. Because the Bible says where the tree die, fall, there shall it lie, stay until judgment take its course. And if nobody buries me, we have some friendly friends around the place. They will take care of the funeral expenses. But your eternal security is important. As long as you die in Jesus name. As long as you're anchored in Christ. That is the most important thing. Why are you here? I am seeking out my eternal security. I am saying, why do I praise today? I am sending up some things to, to put in my bank account. That when I get there, I can hear, well done, the good and faithful servant. Oh, hallelujah. So every person who's sitting here need to understand is not what you work for in this life is important. It's what you work for in that life is important. So a hankered must be hankered in Jesus. We were driving over this morning and we we're having a discussion and he was saying one of our artists, reggae artists, die and they are starting a GoFundMe page for his funeral. And I was saying, artist, I'm going to have to go for me for, him, for him funeral. How much does his burial cost? Three million. Why would you want to bury a person? Three million. If him don't have it, him do have none. Carry him down the gully and let my friends Take care of it. But what would be important is their eternal security. Hmm? 
if your poor in the eternal security is secure, you know what happened? You die with a sense of anticipation. Job thought he was going to die. And Job was now dying, say he was going to die with this sense of anticipation. So Job starts speaking to his enemies and his critics because his heart was overwhelmed. Job starts speaking and Job said, after my skin, worm destroyed this body. Yet, with my eyes, I shall see God. Whom I shall see for myself and my eyes shall be whole and not another. I have this sense, a level of anticipation because I've secured my eternal destiny. So David was running maybe from Saul or maybe from Absalom but he had this sense of security. If I could just lean upon my rock which is Jesus, it will be well. It will be well. It will be well. And as I say that something comes to my mind. The word of God says this woman would she would be at home and many times she would watch the man of God as he passed by and they would stop him and they would give him something to eat and, and Elijah would pass by he and gaze eye and as they passed by uh, the woman would just feed them and one day she said to her husband and I told you this morning that women are very influential she said to her husband listen Ah, let us build a house for the prophet. Somewhere when he passed by, he can get some rest. They did the same, and the prophet was returning thanks by saying to Gaza, what could we do for this woman who has been so kind to us? You see, Virginia, good for tongue tongues. And don't forget when somebody do something for you. Yes, I said, since we are here, prophet, I haven't seen a child. So I theorize that there is no children here. Could you pray to God to bless her with a child? And the prophet walked out and said, next time we come back next year, maybe this time you will have a child. Woman said, hey, you think I did a mere try? You can't stay in the dark. It sounds good, but boy. Not with me, I'm barren. Her heart was overwhelmed. Barren, can't give. And, and you know what happened? The prophet just said, fix up yourself and try. She fix up herself and she try and she have a baby and she realized that the boy had got big and nice. Huh? And the prophet came and looked for them and left. And after the prophet left, the baby just takes sick. And dead. And the woman's heart was overwhelmed. She could not, she, she was wondering, why would God give me something and just take it back so? I can't deal with it. She felt like she was under the ground and she went out and she never even tell her servant outside what happened on the inside. She said, saddle me a horse because I need to go find the man of God because my heart is overwhelmed and only the man that can connect to the source. That's the man I need to see. And when she jumped upon the horse, she said to the man, slap not. Ride as fast as you can. And the servant was riding. And when they reached close to the pop prophet, the word of God said, the prophet saw them from a distance and said to Gaze, I ride and ask her if everything is fine. And when days I reached there, the woman said, All is well. I'm going to the rock. I'm going to my source. I'm going to my source. All is well. And 
she ride and she slunk not and when she reached by Elijah she jumped off and she grabbed his feet you know what I've reached to my rock and she said I didn't ask for a child but you came and you give me a child and right now the child is dead my heart is overwhelmed and the long and short of it, he said, he took his rod and he said to Gezai, listen, go and put this rod on the child. And when you put this rod on the child, the child will come back to life. The woman said, I don't want no Gezai. I want you to come back. Can I say to somebody, you must always find the source. The source is important. So you know what happened? The prophet had to come back. And when the prophet went in the room and realized it was Namni, he said, shut the door behind him. And he lied down on the child. And he stretched himself out on the child. And after he stretched his head, and nose to nose, eyes to eyes, mouth to mouth, hand to hand. And when he breathed into the nostril, Akoshanda, the child came back to life. Can I say God can bring back your dead situation? and put you up on a rock to stay. So you know what happened? The prophet, the child sneezed and the child sneezed and the prophet was able to lift up the child and said your heart was overwhelmed. You come to the rock and I've got been to my source. Your rock is Jesus. Here is your child. Oh, it doesn't matter what your situation. I want to say to somebody, anchor your faith in Jesus. Ah, God. And it doesn't matter. The more your trouble come, ah, the more you go down in Jesus. The more your distress come, is the more you go down in Jesus. That's what the people of Almighty God have. For dear security. You know what else we have? Huh? For security? We are grounded in the resurrection of Almighty God. Because he lives, we shall live also. So you watch, watch us in church today? I saw somebody in church looking like Craig. I'm not sure if he's him. Is that Craig? No, it's not him. But you know what happened? We have a sense of security in the resurrection of Almighty God. And you see, when you serve God, you don't even worry about that. Church is quiet. That's a little afraid part. When you trust in God, you don't worry about death because you know one day after death is over, there's going to be a resurrection and there's going to be a day of joy in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Pastor Mitchell funeral will begin this evening and Friday, Friday afternoon. But it is said that when he keep burying the dead, he would say to them, my brother, you look, you reach heaven before me. My day is coming. You think a joke? His day has come and he's gone to heaven. You never reached there yet? The Bible said Lazarus died and was buried. And the rich man and, and, the, the, and the rich man died. Lazarus died and was taken by angels into Abraham's bosom, but the rich man died and he was buried. That's the hope that the people of Almighty God have in the resurrection of Almighty God. We live today in such a terrible world. Envy, jealousy, malice, and pride. And sometimes, let me go back there, sometimes it come out in the very church. Come sit down with you. Yeah. Our lesson this morning, uh, Joseph was at home and it was at home with him. 
All his brothers was his enemy. But you know what happened? One of these days, sister and Marie, I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to, Lord, help me to remember this song. In this life, my trials are many. And sometimes my feet get weary. And it seems like I would stumble and almost fall. But the gently arms that leads me. It is those hands that keep me steady. Akashanda, that's my anchor. Give me grace that I would make it after all. After all, this life is over. That's the hope the church up. And our labor here is ended. We will stand upon the mountain tops so tall. Looking over in the city that my Savior has prepared. Give me grace that I would make it. people of almighty God is sitting down and sister we shot. this life is full of chaos it's full of trouble it's full of woe but my day is coming the writer said but a brighter day is coming when I shall bid my last goodbye and I don't have to worry anymore don't have to worry when I reach that promised land all my troubles will be over that's what the church is sitting upon we have an anchor we have an anchor in Jesus Christ so let the wind blows let the rain fall I don't care. I am saved beneath his feet. Ah, the rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. Oh, hallelujah. I'm resting in Jesus. My time is quickly going. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can I say to somebody... Let him be your sense of security. In the book of Psalm 91 and verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Nor by the arrow that flight by day. Nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness. Because you know what happened? The Lord is your sense of security. Who goes to bed in the night and fret who might come outside? That's not my business. Who business with that? I don't care. Who goes to bed and fret when you're... I lie down. I hope nobody now come broke my house tonight. I will, where I go for a bed of fret for? When you have the word, the angel of the Lord encampeth round and about them that fear him and deliver them. That's your sense of security. That's what we are hankered in. The Lord become my security. And if he's your security, this is why the scripture is fulfilled in our ears. Huh? Huh? If the watchman knew at the time when the thief would come, he would have watched. The watchman is no security. Sorry, Sister Anne Marie. If the thief is going to come, he doesn't care if the watchman is there. He's going to come. But your only sense of security. Is Jesus Christ. Oh hallelujah. We must not be afraid of evil tidings. Whatever the situations are. We can trust God. As our sense of security. This is why I'm so happy in our brethren.
Somebody that say you have him in your back pocket, but I have him in my front pocket. I hear a radio announcer said something this week, you see, and it cut me to the core of my skin. I'm just upset. And sometimes some of these people must get off the radio and go one side, but God have a time to take them off. And he was critiquing the church, and he was saying, and many of us have this notion, but can I, can I clear the myth? Many of us have the notion, and he said, he said, he, said, he was saying something about the church, and he said, listen, church people are going to tell people about Jesus, and the people are hungry. Nobody know why you're not about no Jesus when they're hungry. Church people, feed the people them, then you tell them about Jesus. And I'm sorry I did not have enough credit to call him Sister Wishart and tell him my situation. Because the Jesus I know, if he, he, he delivered the word to the hungry people. And after the hungry people, he take the word and feed them. That's Bible. But people are of the day that they must feed them. When a man belly fool him, no one hear about God. When you don't have a need, your business. So grace and truth tabernacle, before we help you, you have to surrender to God. We don't walk around and feed hungry people. We go serve Satan. Fatten them for them, go serve Satan. Jesus made them hear the word first understand the word first and after they understand, understand the word he said is there anybody here with anything and somebody said I have five barley loaves and two fishes right. after the people were filled spiritually he said listen I can fill you up temporarily now five barley loaves two fishes but that is not enough for 500 men plus women and children he said bring it come back I'll show you what I can do with it when people are filled with the word can I speak to somebody this is the rock that we have Virgin, when you are filled with the word of almighty God God just start multiply your situation even when you can't understand even when you don't see it him working even when you don't feel it him working but he's working 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 That's the God we serve. So some unsaved want to stay outside there and want to reap some of the blessing that we have. God don't feed people when they're belly full. And if you have a need, come hungry and make him fill up your need and then him start supply your temporal need. If we walk through this community and serve food, you know how many persons we might get come to church after we feed a hundred? One. One. One out of every hundred person, after you feed them, you'll get them come to church. But if they are all hungry, we go to church and see if pastor will give us something. But you know what you'll get? You'll get the word of God. And after you, your belly is full with the word of God. And you get all the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. God just makes somebody walk on, over to you. And say, you're all right, sister. I feel like bless you with a little something here. Yeah. And you leave church with a belly full. Brethren, we have an anchor in Jesus. Even when it feels like we are going under. Just breathe the name Jesus now. When you feel like there's no hope left, breathe the name Jesus. When you don't know where else to turn, it's Jesus. You can imagine some of us, Sister Ashley, is not, I'm not like you that have, how much friends you have, about 400? That you don't have no friends. And you just have to live every day, get a bit of said Jesus. And you know what happened? You feel like you have a million friends because you know what happened? Jesus. It gives you that sense of security. That sense of hope. One day I'm going to be with Jesus. And I, 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 that's all I'm looking for, brethren. Can I say to the unsaved friends in this room, Jesus is coming back and you need Jesus. 
You need a baptism in the name of Jesus. You need an infilling of the Holy Ghost. That is what is going to take you to heaven. That is your security. So as we leave out of this church, and many of you come time and time again, this is not a joke. Don't let the devil fool you and control you. Driving and listening to the gospel station, I hear a man praying. And, uh, he was praying, was it yesterday? I was listening to um, 91.3. And that's the um, Adventist station. And the man was praying. And the man was saying, all these are not the mercies we ask in your son's name. And I said, Bertrand, the time it take you, I say, in your son's name. Question, the son named of Jesus. So you know, could I say, all oh, these are not mercies we ask in the name of Jesus. But the devil is so lie that he doesn't even want us to call his name. We are so educated that we become fools. Oh, these are not the mercies we ask in your son's name. I said, Kuya. The book told us in the book of Acts, chapter 4, whatever you do in words are indeed. But whatever you do in word are indeed. Do all in it. But people don't want to baptize in Jesus' name. And people don't want to call Jesus' name. So I, I develop a thing, brethren. And I, I, I learned the art. Sister which art? I know you would catch it easy. I live where people have to pass my yard. And most of the time when they are passing, them go so. And them I listen for you. You say, morning. If you can't help me about me, say morning to me. When me I say morning for. When you say, when you go, sir, me learn the heart now, virgin. And when they look and see you, I go, so they say morning. Me say morning, me dear. <laughs> and if somebody I say, hey, 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 I don't name, hey, 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 call me name. Some in the business, you hey, hey, yeah. Psst, psst, psst. Hmm? That's not me. Obviously, that's not me. And that is how Jesus has been treated many times. Some of you were in Bible study on Tuesday night. Do you enjoy the lesson? Oh, God, man. I really enjoy Bible study on Tuesday night. You know what happened? You have to call the name. And people want Jesus to do things for them and they don't want God in him. And for bully, him now answer you. You know calling him. Huh? In, 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 in your son's name. My son's name. My son of my name. Then you know that the son of the father's name. Jesus, see what a revelation. <laughs> Didn't you know that the son had the father's name? <laughs> the son must have the father's name. And if the son's name is Jesus, the father's name must be Jesus. That's a revelation no? in the name of your son's name. So, what is the father's name? Must be Jesus. So, we're so stupid. That is our security as we come here Sunday after Sunday. 
And brethren, let me tell you something. I don't come here to fool around. I am dealing with human, uh, our, our, our security from here to there. I was looking at a funeral recently and I watched the priest. The man taught born sinner. Right? All night coughing you see me, he said, my sinner. I'm dressed in a year's ring, dressed in a hall, kind of something. Huh? If you read the book of Exodus chapter 33, when the Lord spoke to Moses and said to Moses, he said, listen, uh, the people are stiff naked and are going to come down before them. You know what the people do? Every one of them strip themselves of them jewelry and everything where them wear because the presence of God was coming down between them. And you have some prophetess, panty, pam sitting. A prophet. When you look upon them, they look like prophet, whatever. If you're coming in the presence of Almighty God, we're going to come down, come high tall. The people that take up everything that they have because the presence of God was coming down. But people on God church look like them work at Berger or Serene Williams. Go stand before a holy God. When you look on the hand, all kind of shaky, shaky, and all kind of something. Eh? And the ladies, them years so tall that if they, when they come and they want to prophesy to you, oh, Jesus, God. Because the hair just keep coming in there. Get an elastic band and band it up. It's not to come in your face, but it's to distract you from saying, Jesus. the world Virgin, when we come to church and we see some some of we are laughing inside there but let me trouble you too some of we come at church and you know who we come with we cell phone and it have a ring and we have a picture out for answer you think God you think God pleased with you grace and truth I warn you when you come and bring your cell phone turn it half if somebody want you to we call you after church Prioritize Jesus. I don't bring it at all. And if you know your cell phone of a ring when you come, don't come at church. Stay a woman hand sight. Here deal with your eternal security. And if your daughter dead when you come at church in dead already. And if God can work a miracle, when you reach it, we work. Yeah, people say, my mother dead and me can't come at church. My father dead and me can't come at church. When my father dead at church, me for. Because I was looking about my eternal security. And Jesus was my only source of survival in my time when my heart is overwhelmed. A church me for. I close this morning, brethren. This is your eternal security. You can't come with cell phone upon your mind. And you listen to somebody call, pick it up and run out of church. Man, you run out and can't come back in, you know. Because you're not treat God good. I hope many of us cell phone become our permanent Bible. You have come at church and when you come and you say, read the word, you say, people are school to find Bible upon cell phone. Carry your Bible. The songwriter said, if you want to be a worker for the Lord, bring your Bible and come. Never say bring your cell phone. Bring your Bible and come. But we are going heaven soon, you know. Anybody ready for go? Me or some amen, but me not see no hand in the ear. I don't see some hand. I don't see some hand lifted. One of these days, you're going to look for me. 
one of these days, you're going to look for me. Hallelujah. One of these days, you're going to look for me. I'll be changed in the twinkling of a night. Will I be move on up a little higher? Mm, move on up a little higher. Oh, move on up a little higher. Oh, move on up a little higher. I'll be changed in the twinkling of a night. Oh, one of these days.
says, we have an anchor that keeps our soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. This is the hope we have. And this is why we, I'm coming here for the past 19 years. Because I come, my hope is built on nothing less. One of these days, brethren, you're going to look for me? Pastor Walker was here. And one of these days you are looking for him. He's not here. You know where? He's somewhere around the throne of God. One of these days, Jesus is going to come. One of these days, we're going to be in the presence of Almighty God. Brethren, you know what I'm sorry about? There are persons who are taking this real light. I'm just wondering if the rapture should come now. And you'll see this mic disappear out of my hand. And the church becomes vacant. What would you do? The writer said, it will be too late. Too late. Mercy God. Too late, too late, judgment come. It will be too late. I want to talk to somebody before we exit. Too late. Mer Don't take this for a fun fear. Mm, don't take it. Too late. Judgment come. If Jesus would come right now and you are not ready, it's going to be too late. I feel Jesus in grace and truth. I feel Jesus in grace and truth. Too late, too late, mercy gone, see God, too late, too late, judgment gone. Can you lift your hands? security is important and because it is important I'm putting my anchor out there should come and I am not ready. search yourself if the trumpet should sound right now and I'm not ready 
what will be my cry? God, we are going. But as we leave this room today, leave here with hope in your minds. Leave here knowing that he is your security. Leave here knowing that there's a place by him where you can find comfort. Leave here knowing that when your heart is overwhelmed, you can go to that rock that is higher than you. Wonderful Jesus, the great I am, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the great eternal wonder, Holy Counselor, Zion Righteous Governor. We praise and honor your name. Thank you for your presence we have felt among ourselves, and indeed you are here with us. So God, as we leave church today to go to our several homes of aboard, we pray you will go with us. We pray that your divine will might be done in our hearts and in our minds. And as we go, let your spirit fill our hearts. Those who are visited with us today, Lord, we pray that they will see and seek for their soul salvation. God will be receiving an offering today. God, we are asking that you bless those who give and those who have not. And God, as they give, it will be for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. afternoon.